Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. And Tasmanians have also been getting into the spirit of things ahead of tonight's history-making event. Riversdale Estate hosting a special event to celebrate the occasion with Hobart's version of the royal family also making a grand entrance. Attendees dressing up in their best royal regalia as the knights and dames enjoyed a high tea. We have a lovely group in there that have dressed up to head to toe um, to celebrate the King's coronation. So it's been really fun. Members of the group say they'll be tuning in tonight to witness the moment. And turning to the day's other news now, and polls have closed in the state's three upper house elections. Around 80,000 people cast their votes, with incumbents tipped to retain their seats. Around 80,000 Tasmanians across three electorates headed to the polls today, putting an end to weeks or months of campaigning. I knew I was going to vote for... Um, you know, for some time. Others first paying attention today. So I actually don't know who to vote, like who's even in there, so I'll just go and pick the best. <laughs> oh, wish me luck. Cheers. Some voting for the first time. They just recently became an Australian citizen. I'm originally from Ukraine, so it's very exciting for me. Election analyst Kevin Bonham is predicting current members to hold their seats, including Ruth Forrest in Murchison, while Rosemary Armitage is hoping for a third term. Obviously, you know, you don't take anything for granted, but I'm certainly hoping that the people appreciate that independence in the upper house is very important. Down south, Labor incumbent Sarah Lovell is confident she's done enough to win the seat of Rumney. Well, I've had six years to build rapport with the community and I've worked really hard to be a really active member of the community and accessible to people, and I think that's coming through. Hoping to see off independent Tony Mulder and Liberal challenger Gregory Brown, who ran a campaign focusing on law and order. This time you're really seeing myself and who I really am and a lot of the ideas we ran with are some of my own. With signs splattered across the electorate, it firms as the tightest race of the three. A Liberal today for me, yeah, hopefully we can uh, stay a Liberal state. I think it's uh, probably best for our economy going forward. Um, Sarah Lovell was stunningly impressive. Greg Brown, very disappointing. Progressive counts are expected tonight. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. I was wondering what the impact of a stadium on Hobart's skyline would be. Have some answers. A visual impact analysis commissioned by the state government shows the potential sight lines from key locations, including the Hobart Cenotaph. The stadium it would be half as tall as Rest Point Casino, standing at 40 metres and take up most of the free land at Macquarie Seven. Point. A youth who escaped custody last month has now been arrested. The 17-year-old fled from the Glenorchy area while being transported to Ashley Youth Detention Centre by a private security agency. Multiple searches have been conducted since April 23 to locate the person who was arrested at a Newtown address in the early hours of this morning. He has been remanded in custody. Meanwhile, the search for a missing 14-year-old girl has entered its sixth day. Cheyenne Lee Tatnell was last seen on the banks of Launceston's North Esk River last Sunday. Despite extensive search efforts since, she has not been located. Anyone with information is asked to come forward. Unions are calling for more consultation about the future of Tasmania's councils. Upper House with the Australian Services Union to discuss the recent review into the sector, which suggested forced amalgamations and shared services could be introduced. They're calling for the state government to talk to employees. The government and the board have not engaged deeply with workers. They have not engaged with communities. Um, this needs to change. As we have uh, continued to consult with the Tasmanian community, and that includes unions and employees in and around our 29 councils. I mean, we, we want to bring uh, the councillors along with us and the employees along with us. The Premier also saying no final decisions have been made. The state's dairy industry is leading the nation according to this year's annual Agribusiness Insights report. State and federal politicians today recognising the important role Agfest plays in growing the sector. 
preparing to showcase the industry which backs Tasmania. Oh, terrific. Oh, yeah, oh, here we go. Cheese Toasty is warming those coldest at Agfest as producers celebrate their contribution. The leaders launched the third annual Agribusiness Insights Report on the event's final day. So we're looking at uh, what's happening in red meat, what's happening in dairy, but also vegetables, our wheat crops, our berries and also across wine as well. Producing 10% of the nation's milk, the dairy industry is the largest agricultural sector in the state, with this year's production already up 2% on last year. That was reflected in the Insights report with uh, Tasmania being the only state with um, growth in their production on, on last year. So even though we had floods in October and a fairly dry summer, um, we're having a really strong autumn at the moment. The snapshot giving the opportunity to see what's trending well across the sector and identifying areas where there are still challenges. A big issue over the last few years has been with our workforce. We know that it's been really difficult for producers to get uh, labour. And finally, we're just starting to see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel there. The state politicians not the only ones singing Agfest's praises. The federal opposition leader also dropping in today for a surprise visit. It's a really spectacular event and I'd say to all Australians, if you have the opportunity, come down to Tasmania Road when they've got one of these events on because it's a huge display of and a very proud display of uh, rural Tasmania. Talia Jordan, 7 Tasmania News. May Day has been described as Union Christmas and today Tasmanian Union members marched through the streets celebrating past achievements and campaigning for more. Industrial manslaughter and making sure we finally get that into law is a high priority. They work in dangerous industries. They know what it's like when their boss doesn't take safety seriously. Tasmania is the only state without industrial manslaughter or a plan to introduce the laws. Starting in the TSL, a dominant third quarter has helped North Launceston into a comfortable win over Lauderdale. At Blunston Arena, poor kicking in front of goal almost cost Clarence victory against a spirited Glenorchy, while at Windsor Park, Kingbrook remain undefeated after a hard-fought win over Launceston. The grand final rematch shaped as the undefeated Tigers' toughest test so far. Kingber wasted early chances, but Lockie Clifford was able to find form in front of goal. Spins, turns, snaps, Lockie Clifford, great goal! The first half an arm wrestle as both sides traded blows. Launceston taking a narrow lead into the main break through Brody Palfreyman. That's a beauty! That's an absolute beauty. The game changing in the third. Kingber scoring three goals to one to take the lead. George O'Neill getting busy inside 50 as well, as the Tigers took a slender lead into three-quarter time. He got the first of the fourth as well, with the Tigers suddenly looking favourites to win. Passing the toughest examination in Tassie footy, the Tigers were too good, cementing their status as premiership favourites. At Utah's, it was a feisty start in the Battle of the Bombers. Lauderdale started well, leading by 10 points at the first change. Looks good off the boat, and they have number three. North hit the front midway through the second, but Lauderdale weren't giving in. Yeah, but Blackburn picks it off, turns onto the right, and surely kicks the goal. Stixie Luckburn was lurking. A third quarter blitz gave the home side some breathing space. Six goals to one breaking the game open. That hot form continued in the final turn. North Launceston downing their southern rivals by 47 points. And at Blunston, Glenorchy got the early jump on the ruse, leading at quarter time. Clarence wasteful in front of goal, kicking one goal ten to half time. Their kicking yips continued in the second half, but were eventually able to bag four final quarter goals and squeeze out a win. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Good evening. 14 the top for Launceston and Devonport today. Hobart and Burnie are both at 13. 14 for Flinders Island and Lowhead. Friendly Beaches, St Helens and King Island all 13. 11 the top for Strawn and Grove. Liawini dropping down to minus 5 before warming up to just 5 degrees today. Some speckled cloud over the west and south today, pushing some cold air over the state. Cloud also over the north east this morning. Cloud over large parts of the mainland today with some thunderstorms over WA. Tomorrow a large high to the south of the Bight will approach the state, bringing a cool start to the day before extending into a ridge later in the afternoon. 
Southerly winds of 10 to 15 knots in the south, reaching up to 25 in the north, 30 around the northeast. A strong wind warning for waters east of Flinders Island and the upper east coast. There's a bushwalkers alert for the western and central plateau districts and a frost warning for the majority of the state. A shower or two in tops of 12 for Hobart and Richmond tomorrow. Morning frost and then partly cloudy for ooze. A mostly sunny 13 for Launceston. Devonport sunny and 12. Morning frost and sunny at Deloraine. Burnie a sunny 13 tomorrow. A shower or two for Strawn. Showers easing for Curry. Wet across the east tomorrow. A possible shower in St Helens. Swansea 12. A shower or two for Whitemark. And more wet weather is on the way, with showers increasing about the west on Monday morning before extending to the South and Bass Strait Islands. Showers for the west, south and central areas on Tuesday find elsewhere with some patchy morning fog. And Wednesday, showers about the west and far south before clearing later in the day. A shower or two for Adelaide and Perth tomorrow, Melbourne 13. Showers in Sydney, a partly cloudy 26 for Brisbane. And currently in Hobart, Launceston, 7, Devonport, it's 8 degrees and partly cloudy. And Lou, I've got my tiara ready. The main event is about to start. The cucumber sandwiches are cut and it's almost time to pour a cup of English breakfast tea. Looking absolutely gorgeous as always. Thank you for that, Nick. I might and go enjoy a PIMS. Thank you for that. That's all your news for now. Stay with us for extensive coverage of the King's coronation. For now, good night.